All right, people, what's going on? Back at it again. We're over in Egypt today doing uh, GP1, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Let's uh, put, a, put an end to the shaft dilemma. Let's take the mystery out of the mystery shaft, mystery solved. And this guy named Dixon, Freemason Dixon. I don't know if he was from the uh, Mason Dixon line, but it's 1883, I think he was over there. I think he's uh, from England. And uh, he located a couple of, um, of shafts in the Queen's Chamber. Because there was two, two chambers, there was two shafts already opened up in the uh, King's Chamber. And um, I guess he probably reasoned, say, hey, there's two shafts in the King's Chamber. There might be two shafts uh, in the uh, Queen's Chamber. Went down and knocked around a little bit. Bing, bing, bing. Noticed there was a little bit of a change in sound. And I think he had a chisel through three or four inches to get to the uh, Queen's uh, shafts, North and South shaft. Anyways, the reason for the bronze hooks on the doors up at the top of the shafts in the Queen's chamber, they got the doors up there. Then they got the, they found a bronze grappling hook which I spelt wrong, so please don't uh, correct me in the video. I can see it right now. And, uh, well, if you want to, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, hooks and granite ball explained in full detail. Okay, here we are. GP1. Here's the shafts. Uh, these are queen shafts. That's the north side over here. South side over there. Uh, there's no doors up in the king's chamber. I think um, I think his name was Gatterbrink. Gatterbrink went up there, and uh, I forget his first name. And then uh, yeah, there was no shafts up there. We can get into why there was uh, there was no shafts. There was no doors at the ends of those shafts. But because the Queen's Chamber was found relatively late in the 1800s, um, you know they managed to uh, survive. I believe it's 1883. I don't know, somewhere around there. But anyways. All right, this, th those are the shafts in question. We're going to be targeting the queen shafts. These are um, basically the shafts, the construction methodology. The, um, you know, they're, they're blocks. They're like uh, U-shaped blocks on top with the, with the channel, and they, they sit on um, flat stones on the bottom. And we have another, another one here. It's kind of another rendition. Uh, again, you can see it's just a, it's like an eight, eight by almost nine inch squared uh, shaft that goes up, well, I think these are, I don't know what these are, 300 some odd feet, 290 feet, 400, I think the Queen, King's Chamber are, are longer, they're like 300 some odd feet each. Um, word has it that uh, they go up, once they, they go out horizontally and then they break up, um, diagonally and and to this day you can shoot a laser beam down from one end to the other on all four of these shafts and it will uh, it will hit it'll stay in the middle so th these things were built with precision stand the test of time unbelievable absolutely unbelievable what these people do these shafts actually had to go up before the pyramid went up so the shafts had to go above the pyramid course you know the horizontal course of the pyramid these shafts had to stick out before uh, they could come up with the next course while they were uh, uh, building the pyramid. Just, just unbelievable. I mean, the uh, the absolute dedication and absolute amazement um, of, of putting these things together it just it just boggles the mind. It's just it's just unbelievable. It's just incredible. Just amazing feat of engineering. Uh, I don't think anything anybody's rivaled this kind of uh, you know engineering to date. Just absolutely amazing. All right, here's uh, the uh, one of the shafts. I think it's the south south shaft. Uh, the opening, obviously, you know, bang, bang, bang. You find a hole, you knock it, you you break out the um, the granite, and uh, basically these uh, these shafts were. Um, you know, they bored into like a three foot thick granite block, but they didn't go all the way into the queen's chamber or the king's chamber. They had about three to four inches before they, protrude, you know, pushed right through. So they just went in there and it's just, just, um, just absolutely um, mind boggling 
to why they would do that, you know, just take all that trouble, go all the way through this uh, granite block almost to the end and, and not have it protrude, uh, punch through. I don't want to say the word protrusion anymore <laughs> after the last video. So anyways, um, yeah, so it's just, just incredible. I mean, you know, they went, they went through all that trouble and um, it went, um, you know, three to, f it was three inches before breaking through. So it was, it was basically sealed off. Um, this is the top door here. This is uh, Ganabrick's door, they call it. Ganabrick? Ganabrick? I forget. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'm, the, I'm the master of butchering people's names. But anyways, these are the old infamous bronze hooks. You notice the large one on your right there that's uh, now missing. I think the last time they went up there, they chopped it off. But of course, you know, it's, it's like uh, archaeologists if if the date of the metal is out of touch with, um, you know, the, um, the, the the guys in bare feet and loincloth that built this thing a couple hundred years ago, uh, built the pyramids a few thousand years ago, they're not going to let that data out. So probably not going to see that. That'll be buried forever because we gotta we got to stay in the confines of uh, La La Land um, for whatever reason. Uh, I think I think they're losing the uh, I think they're losing the grip on La La Land. People are people are uh, crashing through the veil and saying, uh, uh, "We're not playing that game anymore." Anyways, these are the two hooks. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get into a few pictures so everybody can get a visual of what it is I am talking about. Um, again, this is the front. You get two bronze, um, you know, uh, tabs sticking out, and then they hook up underneath on the back side where they drill the hole through. And went and looked, and you, you know they kind of hook in. So they was they were uh, built for for um, you know some kind of tension, you know, so they wouldn't pop out. That's what we're going to get into. So there was there was some kind of tension on these things. They just didn't want them. So the the the, uh, the bronze um, lag went through and then hooked back up against the back of the door, so you couldn't pull it out. Uh, this is the infamous uh, grappling hook, I call it. And um, I don't know, you know, it's 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 obviously it's it's um, like three to four inches both ways. It's got a couple of old bronze screws that um, were used to attach it to something, which I'm going to show you what it was attached to. Uh, it's, I think it's in um, this is up in uh, the British Museum. I don't know if it's on display or not, but it's, it's up there. I'm sure if you go ask them for it, they'll bring it out for you. Uh, the relics from uh, the lower north shaft, you got the uh, granite ball, I think it's like a three inch, three to four inch in diameter granite ball. You got the grappling hook, that's uh, 50 millimeters long. And uh, the ball weighs one pound, three ounces, and then a piece of uh, cedar fragment uh, considered to be part of the measuring, of, of a measuring rod of some sorts. This uh, was found by um, Dixon. He brought it back to the uh, to the old country. Here's the stone ball. Hope these pictures are coming in pretty good. They look like they're coming in from the screen I'm seeing. And there's the uh, grappling hook. So we're all on board. We got we 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 see the uh, the door. We got the door with the uh, two holes in it. Now the uh, the way they built the shafts is they had to. Actually, let me just let me just go ahead here. All right, here's a good, here's a good image right here. They had to build this, build the shaft uh, before the course, of the next course of the pyramid can come in. So, uh, and these things, like I said, they were precision. They were laser beam precision straight. And um, those hooks were attached to a door. Now, as they went up, every you know, they'd probably go out and build um, maybe 10, 15, 20 feet of the shaft and, the, you know, the hooks and the doors would be hooked up to a wire and um, this contraption right here is uh, basically what it was hooked up to. It was hooked up to uh, the stone ball, had a little bit of a, uh, you know, you can see on the side of the stone ball that I showed you, there's an indent where, where it would have been pinched by like a little axle or whatever. And this is the wood that, uh, you know, the stone ball attached to. It's probably some, you know, some kind of fasteners on the side. And then this uh, grappling hook um, attached to the board, okay? So it was a wire hook, granite ball. 
basically we're talking about a plumb bob you know if you're a builder out there and um, you're trying to keep your your pyramid shaft straight you have to have some kind of uh, line wire on the inside of the shaft so you can take your measurements as you're going up you're going up, raise it up a little bit lower it down a little bit over to the left and over to the right now that door with the two hooks that started out at ground zero and every you know 10 15 feet they took it off and and moved it up to the next uh the next section of shafts that they put in so the door the door would be pulled up with the wires on it they didn't take it off they pulled it up and then you dropped the u-shaped blocks on and then you know you took your measurements you know you can look inside as you, you know you have like a you know probably a hollow block so you can make sure that the uh this thing's going up at the right degree angle and um so basically it's it's a real crude rudimentary plumb bob uh, for doing diagonal diagonal work, you know things that are diagonally uh, sloped sloped work. Okay, all right. So that's the that's the wire hook granite ball wood plumb bob. I haven't gave it a name yet, but that's just my theory. It's a theory. I'm just working on a theory here. And again, this is the um, you know the air shaft construction, uh, you know at the pyramid uh, under construction. You got the base of the pyramid here. You got the stone ball and the wooden, um, you know, roller uh, plumb bob, if you will. Bronze grappling hook. Oh, I'm missing a P there too. And uh, you got the door at the top, the air shaft, the bronze hooks, and the door, and then the wire is attached to the hook that goes down to the uh, rolling plumb bob. Okay, that's pretty simple stuff. Here's a top view of it and uh, as you can see there's uh, you know two wires that hooked onto it they probably had some kind of a um, you know some kind of a, a length to this a fixed length maybe you know 20 30 40 feet or whatever so they could just pull it up as they're building the shaft they could just pull the door up it would stay attached and they would move up again uh, taking measurements on um, you know left right and what have you it's possible they could have had, um, you know, high-tech digital, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, readings that, uh, you know, used uh, magnetic fields um, that would uh, basically give you a, a, a reading on which way you were going with these uh, shafts, whether they go up, down, you know, um, uh, horizontal, whatever, and uh, keep, it, keep it going straight. So... Anyways, this is the uh, top view. Um, you know, they could have a dielectric field in there. I mean, I mean, you could, you know, you could use this thing today for God's sakes. You could hook out up to a dielectric field and, um, uh, you know, uh, wire it into some circuitry and, and get a reading on whether which way you were going. If you had to go uh, up, up higher, lower, or east or west. Um, on this, this is a, this is a shaft and. The, the, they got these straight marks in there, you know, which could have been could have been the wire that was once part of this thing. And my, my my understanding is my my thoughts are that this um, broke off and ended up just rolling down the end of the shaft, and you know because the other shafts don't have it. Um, well, the other one in the Queen's Chamber. This one was just found, I believe, in the north um, the north uh, shaft. If I'm not mistaken. Well, it's either you know 50 percent. It's either the south shaft or the north shaft, but they both didn't have them. So the uh, thought is that, that that's why um, that that's why that uh, was found there is because it broke off you know they were the 300 400 feet up and then it might have snapped and it just rolled down and, and uh, got, got lost for the uh, sands of time. So anyways, that's about it. That's a theory. Just a quick video throwing it out there. Like I said, I'm just dumping stuff out there. I got so much stuff I, I'm just making some videos cranking this stuff out. Hopefully you guys uh, can grab it, run with it. Um, it's an idea. I mean, I don't know what, you know, uh, I know have plenty of ideas. Everybody's got this pyramid filled with water. I mean, honestly, uh, you know, God bless them. I'm not going to put down anybody's ideas or whatever. It's just, I, I really don't, um, you know, think that they would fill this thing up with water and, um, or, you know, the, the, they got the nuclear theory, you got the, uh, I mean, it's a, a nuclear uh, power plant, and there's, um, 
you know, making uh, hydrogen and, and a few other things. I mean, it's all, it's all good stuff. Gets everybody thinking. I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere without those, uh, you know, the people that have come up with those theories. So I'm not going to put down anybody. I mean, sometimes I lose my temper uh, just being in this, being in this uh, environment um, with the, with the, you know, mainstream and, you know, the control freaks out there. But anyways, that's about it. You know, those, those are the, uh, you know, those are the images. Those are the shafts. Like I said, you can you can see where that stone ball, plumb bob would have been rolling up through the top, and you just use it to uh, make sure you're going up straight, okay? Just because uh, this these things were made to be perfectly straight. Now, I'm not gonna. I'll give you the sales pitch now. My book, um, in my book, Pyramid Gravity Force, uh, I'll put the link under the uh, YouTube video. But uh, I call these uh, gats. And they were graviton accelerator uh, shafts, gas rally, G-A-S, graviton accelerator shafts. And I think because I believe these uh, pyramids are lensing off of the moon's um, gravitational field, uh, the Earth spins into the moon's gravitational field, sets up the Fibonacci uh, sequence with the, uh, the way the pyramids are set up in a dog leg or Orion's belt configuration, whatever you want to talk about. But if, if you look at the way the, uh, you know, the Earth rotates into the moon, the small one goes and in, cuts into the uh, moon's gravitational field first, and consequently sets up the uh, you know the uh, the uh, vortex, the uh, Fibonacci spiral. So, it just accentuates a, a tight gravitational vortex, and these uh, ga gas shafts, which I call graviton accelerators, gravitino accelerators. They might even be gravitinos. Who knows? But um, they supplied a, um, you know, a, 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 a frequency, a gravity frequency that almost act like, um, you know, in between the uh, waves. So you have the gravitational uh, focal point up in the uh, king's uh, chamber. Above the king's chamber, you had the relieving chambers, which aren't relieving chambers. Those are, those are giant, um, you know, uh, frequency generators and the gravity gravity frequency range and then um, you know your, your shafts would come in and, and uh, uh, basically act like a gravitational balancing mechanism and they, they would go in where there was a low frequency the gravitinos would flow in and then when it got too high they would it'd be like a shock absorber you know that type of thing and so they're built it's built like a machine like Christopher Dunn said it's a machine you know these things are just the precision and the time and engineering that they that went into putting these things, these shafts together, I, it's just my mind. It was like, these things are like uh, you know two two and a half million uh, 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 blocks and uh, you know six million tons. I mean, it's you know, just astronomical. And then you got these two little tiny eight by eight shafts, eight by nine inch shafts going three four hundred feet straight up at uh, forty degree, thirty five degree, whatever angles they're at. And, um, you know, throughout the whole process of putting this pyramid together, it's just mind-boggling. I mean, the, the, the shafts, I mean, the pyramid's child's play, you know. I mean, these shafts are where it's at. This is like going to Puma Punku and seeing that, you know, uh, and, and uh, Tiwanaku and seeing the, you know, the blocks up there and uh, just the amazing uh, engineering uh, on those stones. All right, John Chauncey here. Check out my uh, book, Pyramid Gravity Force, and um, the other book I wrote, There Is Something About the Moon, co-authored with uh, Wendy Salter. And um, hope you enjoyed the picture show. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I work for likes and uh, good comments. So keep it clean. You can bash me, but keep it clean. I just nuke you. You know, you, you start dropping the, uh, the foot. If I can't drop the F-bomb, you guys ain't. So, uh, all right, all right. Remember, when the head comes away from the neck, it's over. Peace out, people.